Luigi's Mansion was officially released onto the GameCube on September 14th, 2001. It was later released on the 14th in North America, the 3rd of March in Europe, and May 17th in Australia. The game was not only one of the launch titles for the GameCube, but it was also the first game in the Mario franchise to be released onto the fresh new console at the time. My personal first experience with Luigi's Mansion came in the summer of 2011, when I managed to get a copy of the game from GameStop. I still have it. And uh, it scared the hell out of me back then. I think it was a combination of the graphical aesthetic and how the game begs to be played at night with the only light coming from the TV screen. But anyway, I'm getting sidetracked, so today we're going to be talking about one of the best icebergs for the game that I was able to find. This is the Ultimate Luigi's Mansion Iceberg. Created by Matos Schmilmore, as well as some other people on Reddit, this iceberg contains 219 entries with six different levels to it. I should also clarify that this iceberg only covers content relevant to the original game, so that means nothing about Dark Moon, Luigi's Mansion 3, or anything like that. And if you're watching this, then you're definitely familiar with the format for these videos, but in the off chance that you aren't, this graphic on the screen is a very simple explanation for it. Basically, all you need to know is that the entries and tiers go from the most common and well-known material to only things that really dedicated people would know. So now that you're familiar with the format, if you weren't already, let's begin. Also, no confidence meter this time, because I honestly just don't feel like implementing one for this one. If I'm wrong about something or generally unsure about it, then it'll be pretty clear. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Totaka's Song Totaka's song is a very small music piece that the composer, Kazumi Totaka, has managed to sneak into most of the games that he's been a sound director or a composer for, and Luigi's Mansion is no exception. The themes are really nothing more than hidden easter eggs, and can only be heard after certain conditions are met. It was first put into the game X for the Game Boy in 1992, and its first introduction in a Mario title would be in Mario Paint, also from 1992. These songs have since been put in many different Mario titles, and the way to trigger the one in Luigi's Mansion is by simply waiting for around three minutes on the tutorial screen before you practice capturing ghosts. And this is what it sounds like. Beta. I'm sure that most people are aware of how video games are made, even to the simplest degree, but most, if not all, games go through many different stages, and Luigi's Mansion has a very well-known beta version. There's a lot of entries on here that go into the specifics of the beta, so more on that later. Beta Game Over Screen This is one of the most famous pieces from the game's beta. Allegedly, if you got a game over on the beta version of the game, it would play this, which would actually terrify me if I was a kid still. But it's important to note here that this being an end screen is not confirmed and never has been, and it's more likely that it was just a cutscene made for Space World 2000 instead. Hanging Luigi Shadow Popularized by several YouTube videos from as early as 2008, if you go into the attic and wait until a lightning strike lights up the room, the shadow that Luigi casts onto the wall kind of looks like he's hanging from a rope. Now the idea that Nintendo would intentionally put this in the game is honestly not the most impossible thing, but judging by other screenshots that do the same thing in other rooms, it's definitely just a bug in the lighting engine that makes Luigi's shadow slightly higher up, or it's just intentional due to other conditions that make the shadow appear higher up than it probably would otherwise not be. Space World 2000 Build Most people know about this already, but Space World was an annual video game trade show that ran from 1989 all the way to 2001. Each year's event would showcase upcoming games and consoles, being most well known for games like Super Mario 64 as well as the Nintendo 64 console itself. This entry obviously refers to the build of the game that was shown off for Luigi's Mansion in 2000, and as far as the specific build that was shown, the only people who have copies of it are most likely to be people who were or still are affiliated with Nintendo. The same thing applies to the showcase of the game in 2001 as well. No versions of the demo builds from either year have been leaked or appear to be owned by anybody outside of Nintendo, so until something does come out about the demos, they're going to definitely stay in the vault. Basher Ghost 
The Basher is an unused ghost that only appears on the builds from the Space World demos, and the reason it was removed is not known. They use the same model as another enemy called the Gold Ghost, and in this footage that restores its functionality in a mod made by Portable Productions, the enemy would go up behind Luigi, trailing blue smoke behind itself until it appeared right behind the player. If it manages to jump scare Luigi, it does it like other ghosts do, accompanied by text saying, BAH! as well as probably scaring the player. Beating the game in under 20 minutes. Unlike the other main Mario title for the GameCube, Luigi's Mansion can be completed in a really short amount of time. The entry says 20 minutes, but it can actually be beaten in as short as 5 minutes, and here's how. In a more simpler explanation, play the game as normal until you defeat the first boss in the game, being Chauncey. Once the chest in the room spawns, line up this ball in the same spot as on screen, and then go in and out of the room until you eventually clip behind the chest. Once you're behind it, if you knock on this painting and hold up on the analog stick, then it should clip you through the floor into this position. When you get into this step, the game visually loads area 1, but you're able to walk right across it when you're in the spot on the ceiling. The only reason this works is because the collision for floor 2 is loaded, but the visuals of floor 1 is loaded too. Luigi's position here is in an area called Area 1.5, and being in it is what's making it possible for him to go past rooms like this. Eventually though you'll get stopped by an invis wall, but this can be cleared using the first major glitch which involves the player being sideways. If you start moving the camera as the player gets hit from underneath, Luigi will jolt in a very specific direction. If you combine this with holding the C-stick and then letting go the second Luigi's damage animation plays, he gets stuck in an angle like this. This is important because if the player is skewed, it allows you to clip over certain walls that you otherwise can't. Just like that. At this point, getting scared by any enemy will make Luigi clip back into the hallway, and the step you see now basically involves keeping anything from triggering an animation that would break the glitch. Next you have to get into a really big angle like this in order to clip through the corner, and if done right, it should look like this. Now the player is in between this room and the corridor that goes to King Boo. The only thing left now is to make Luigi somehow fall into the corridor below. It's possible to do this by going to the standard camera mode, holding upright, pressing A, and then entering the first person camera in exactly a frame after. And if all of that is done correctly, then you will drop into the corridor like this. Now you have to manage to go around the door, since that door will trigger a cutscene and take you all the way back to the main menu. And this is arguably the hardest part of the speedrun, since going too far out of bounds to the right causes Luigi to get stuck, and going too far to the left triggers the cutscene. This is made slightly easier with a pause buffer strategy, and if done correctly, then you will get put right into the final room, run up to King Boo, and finish the rest of the game. The current any% percent world record at the time of me making this video is held by Mini Mini 352 with a time of 5 minutes and 2 seconds. This was still a rather simple explanation of the run, and there have since been even more insane discoveries in the any% percent category, and since I didn't go into the specifics of the movement mode switches you have to do and all that sort of stuff, I highly recommend Lunatic J's video on how speedrunners broke the game again. 3DS Remake In March of 2018, Nintendo released a remake of the original Luigi's Mansion, co-developed by Grezzo for the 3DS. The remake graphically improves things like the world, Luigi's model, added a screen of the map at the bottom screen, as well as redesigning the gallery with a boss rush mode that allows the player to fight ghosts they've already defeated in a single player or co-op experience. There's a lot of mixed reviews online about this remake specifically, so I don't know what to think about it, but if you have experience with the remake and have any complaints of your own, then let me know in the comments. I've heard things like the controls are faulty, the puzzles are weak, and so on. Mario Kart Maps If you're at all familiar with Mario Kart DS, Mario Kart 7, or Mario Kart Tour, then you're probably aware of the Luigi's Mansion track that's featured in all three. I personally have only played the one from the DS version, since that's the one I grew up on, but the track seems to play the same throughout all three of the versions, so I don't really think I'm missing out. Safari Ghost In posts on websites like GameFAQs in as early as July of 2011, there have been numerous reports of a ghost that was supposed to be in the Safari room that got removed for quote, being too scary. 
this post specifically says that they heard it in a Sugar Conroy video, with Sugar Conroy himself saying that he heard it in Nintendo Power. This room is called the Safari Room. Now, believe it or not, according to an issue of Nintendo Power, I believe it was, there was a boss ghost that was intended to be in this room, but it was removed from the final game as it was deemed too scary. It says on the wiki that Nintendo Power rumored a boss in the Safari Room that wanted to cut off Luigi's head, which does appear to be true, appearing in an issue from October 2001. But the actual ghost itself stems from not only rumors spread throughout the internet during that time, but is, well, actually just that. The claims of this ghost being cut from the game before release also don't add up to the fact that the game was already released in Japan when the magazine came out. And the most well-accepted answer here is that the caption that implied its existence was simply written to make the sentence pop a little more, and nothing else. There are fan-made mock-ups of what the ghost would have looked like if it was real, and my personal favorite one is this one from DG Crafter on Reddit. So to conclude this entry, unless new information comes out from Nintendo archives or other Giga leaks or something that proves it wrong, there never existed a Safari ghost in any version of Luigi's Mansion. Hidden Menu Messages Luigi's Mansion has a couple of hidden messages in the main menu. The first one comes from the file select screen, where the sentence, Welcome to your mansion, sometimes fades out the Y to become, Welcome to our mansion. When you go to copy a file, it says, More files mean more fear. And when trying to erase a file, it says, You can erase the files, but not the fear. The next step comes from the pause menu. This isn't text, but the ghost that sits behind the picture will occasionally look right at you if you wait long enough. And the final message is another two-parter, saying, you'll be back, and will be waiting, upon trying to exit the game. Hidden Rooms Luigi's Mansion contains two secret treasure rooms that are not immediately obvious to the player. The first one is this mouse hole located in the southwest corner of the mansion, and getting in it requires you to scan it with the Game Boy Horror. For the second one, you have to go onto the roof, being accessed by falling down the chimney. Watering Plants It's possible to get treasure by watering the bean-like plants in the boneyard once in every area after the first. Watering it makes it initially grow into a bud, a flower, and then finally a pod. Watering it once after that causes the pod to open, giving loot as well as one of the two gold diamonds in the game. Poltergust Overheating in the beta version of the game, the Poltergust 3000 was instead called the Poltergust 400, and looked like this. In this footage of a recreation of the beta, the Poltergust, as you could probably imagine, would overheat, doing so when it reached 10, causing it to explode. E3 Timer In the demo version shown off at E3 in 2001, the game had a clock that served as a timer, with the clock running out once the timer had reached 1.30 a.m. When it did run out, it played a cutscene where Egad calls Luigi, taking the player back to the title screen. Falling Chandelier If Luigi goes underneath the chandelier in the foyer and doesn't move, then the chandelier will start spinning and then try to hit him. I should note that this only happens when the room is uncleared, at least from my experience. Speedy Spirits Speedy Spirits are a rare blue variant of the unused gold ghost enemy, only able to spawn when the rooms are dark. The cool thing about them is that they actually try to hide from Luigi instead of sneaking up on him. They can only be found by going up to certain objects, and if they're spotted they try to run away from Luigi. During that though, you have a window to catch them and be rewarded. Space World 2001 Build I've touched on aspects of this already with the 2000 build, but the Space World 2001 build is a slightly newer and more updated version of the game that they showed off. The trailer this time showed off two builds of the game, as well as new areas like Area 3, as well as a whole checklist of other advancements. Golden Mice These are kind of in the same category as Speedy Spirits, with Golden Mice only being found in set locations, as well as some randomized ones. The non-randomized ones can be found in five different locations, and the randomized ones can be found in another five. Smash Bros. Stage Luigi's Mansion can be seen as stages in Super Smash Bros. Brawl, Smash for the Wii U, 
and Smash Ultimate. Luigi has fought in Brawl and Ultimate for his unlock, and I don't think there's much else to say here. Lego set. Yep, it's true. Now I personally haven't really kept up with Legos for probably 12 or so years, but yeah, there are Lego sets for Luigi's Mansion specifically, so that's pretty cool. If I were to ever get back into collecting Legos, then maybe I'll pick one of these up for myself, I'm not sure. Boo puns. All of the Boo's names are related to puns. For example, there's Bamboo, Bootha, Game Boo, Taboo, Boolicious, Turboo, and that's just around a quarter of them. I love them, they're great. Vincent Van Gore. Vincent Van Gore, also being called the Starving Artist, is one of the portrait ghosts you find later in the game. It's said that the character refused to let his art die, even after not being able to sell a painting for 30 years. The character is important due to him being directly responsible for creating a lot of the ghosts that flood the halls of the mansion, and defeating him gives you the key to the secret altar. This is also directly mentioned by Egad when talking about Vincent Van Gogh. To put the story simple about the rest of the lore, after King Boo releases him, he locks himself in the artist's studio, and it's only later when Luigi gets rid of most of the ghosts that he gets very sad, which exposes his heart, allowing Luigi to defeat him. The mansion is an illusion. The further Luigi goes into the mansion, it becomes more and more clear that the mansion is nothing more than an illusion created by King Boo to lure Mario and Luigi to trap them. Mario Slugger Stage Luigi's Mansion is featured in Mario Super Sluggers, being a recreation of the backyard. There's also no way to access the location unless it becomes night, and you also have to buy Luigi's flashlight for 300 coins in order to get in. Boarded Up Doors in Beta the beta version of the game has a lot of doors that are completely boarded off. Though I'm pretty certain that the only reason Nintendo did this was because a lot of areas in the game weren't finished in the version shown off at places like Space World, or that the progression used to be different for the rooms. Golden Diamond Golden diamonds are the rarest and most valuable gems that you can collect. Each gold diamond is worth 20 million G, which for reference one coin is only worth 5000 G. There's only two of them in the game, with the first one being obtainable from watering the plant like I talked about earlier, and the other one is dropped when Luigi captures the 50th and last boo. Beta Ghost Designs The beta versions of Luigi's Mansion have only a set couple of designs for the enemies. These three on the screen are for the Blue Twirler, Purple Puncher, and the Basher. And these smaller two are for an unused blue ghost used in Space World 2000 builds, and the other one was used for the Space World trailer. Beta HUD The finalized version of the UI is massively different to the initial iterations of it. Original versions, with this one being from E3 2001, have a lot that obviously differ from the final. This UI has the coin counter as an individual stat alongside the health, the Game Boy Horror is replaced with a timer, and this also doesn't show the aforementioned Poltergust overheating timer as well. The finished one does a much better job at cleaning everything up, at least in my opinion. The stats being on the Game Boy Horror and No More Overheat Meter is much cleaner, but what do you think? Let me know in the comments if they could have improved it even more. Painting Rankings When you defeat a portrait ghost, they get a ranking based on how well the fight with them went. You can get one of three different ranks, being Bronze, Silver, Gold, and a hidden fourth one in the 3DS version, being Platinum. Gold is given if you take away 90% of the ghost's health in one go, Silver requires at least 50%, and Bronze is given if you fail to meet the requirements for the Silver rank. Power Tennis Stage Luigi's Mansion is a featured court in Mario Power Tennis. Every stage in this game has a unique gimmick if wanted, and for this stage, hitting tiles on the opposite end of the court will make ghosts show up and harass whoever is on the tile that's hit, and the only way to get rid of them is by hitting a switch on the other side. References to Luigi's Mansion This is pretty self-explanatory, and for those unaware, there are a lot of references to Luigi's Mansion throughout the Mario franchise. It's mostly references to either the mansion or Luigi with the Poltergust, and it shows up in Super Smash Bros. Melee, Mario Sunshine, Mario Party 4, 8, and 9, Mario Kart Double Dash, Wario World, 
Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, Super Mario 64 DS, Mario Kart DS, Super Paper Mario, Super Mario Galaxy, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and this is just half of how many games feature things from Luigi's Mansion. Toad was sent by Peach. When Mario went to Luigi's Mansion to visit, Peach had gotten worried at one point and sent various different toads to go find him after she got wind of Mario going missing. The toad in the foyer specifically says that if Peach finds out that Mario got captured, she will completely flip out. <laughs> PAL Region's Hidden Mansion You might think that Hidden Mansion is a literal hidden mansion somewhere in the game, but it's actually referring to the PAL exclusive game mode with the same name. It's an exclusive game mode in only the European versions, and it has more difficult ghosts, double damage when hit, and the Poltergust is twice as powerful as normal. The buff to the ghost is that they have more health than normal. The Gold Ghost, for example, normally only has 10 HP, but it has 15 in the Hidden Mansion mode. Basically, if you want a more challenging experience and have the game on PAL, then you should totally try it out for yourself. Chef Ghost The Chef Ghost is yet another unused ghost from the beta. The ghost gained popularity from this screenshot, and from what I can tell it looks like a pink ghost that has a chef's hat. If implemented, it more than likely would have been fought in the kitchen, and that thing that he's holding by the way is a tomato, which can actually be found in the game files as a leftover model. Hey Luigi, what's the holdup? If you go to the courtyard, you can very clearly hear Mario in the background going, Hey Luigi, what's the holdup? Astral Hall Looping If Luigi doesn't light the candles in the Astral Hall to start the event, he gets looped back to the entry door in a continuous loop. Reminds me of SCP-970, if anybody knows what that is. Rank A Mansion After beating Luigi's Mansion, a new mansion gets built with the size of it depending on what rank you got, and getting rank A, which is the highest rank, will give you this one. And in the background of Luigi's Circuit in Mario Kart DS, the rank A mansion can actually be seen in the background of the track. Ghost Playing Cards During the game showcase at Space World 2000, there's a scene that shows three different ghosts playing cards. This looping gif doesn't really show all that much, but there's another screenshot of it on the wiki which is visible on the Ghost Portrificationizer. It's also worth noting here that none of the models remain in the finished build of the game, with only the first two ghosts having their sprites in the game still. Green Toad there's an unused variant of Toad that makes him green instead of the signature red. Why this was unused, I don't know. Unused Dialogue Icons These five icons, courtesy of the cutting room floor, are all unused variants of dialogue icons. It also shows the green Toad from the previous entry. Unused Rank Emotes these three unused graphics, most likely intended for the ranking system, show what it might have looked like when getting the lowest, good, and best possible rank. Man, that Luigi one for the lowest one is interesting, to say the least. Elemental Blast I'm pretty sure this is referring to the Elemental Medallions, and if so, these are three different unique medals that can be found throughout the mansion in the game. The medals are responsible for giving the Poltergust special abilities, being fire, water, and ice. The fire metal melts ice, the water puts out fire, and the ice will freeze water. Burning down fake doors. Speaking of elements, it's possible to burn down all of the fake doors by using the fire. Mario Storybook. Have you ever wondered what the book that Neville, the first portrait ghost, is reading? Well, the book itself is a direct reference to Pinocchio, more specifically the book that can be seen in the 1940 film, as evident by this chart from Super Mario Broth. The other one is a little more obvious, with Mario's side profile replacing that of Pinocchio's. What's in the book? I don't know, probably a story, right? Empty Bathtub Shadow 
The first time Luigi enters this bathroom, he is greeted by, get this, an empty bathtub shadow. And opening the curtain reveals a ghost named Miss Petunia. Pikmin trailer. In the options for the game, there's an option to view a Pikmin movie, which is the original Pikmin games trailer. You know, I have a feeling that I missed out by not playing the Pikmin games as a kid. Luigi's Mansion lasts one night. With the exception of it being directly mentioned that Luigi, quote, has one night to save Mario, in the US commercial you'll see later, this is more of a rumor that people have been debating about ever since the game came out. Knowing that the only time you ever see sunlight in the game is... never, I don't doubt this rumor actually being true as it makes perfect sense. This idea could probably be openly interpreted in whatever way someone wants to see it, like for example maybe the specific world Luigi is in here has really long nights for example, but again this idea just makes perfect sense anyway. Beta Restoration Created by Portable Productions, the beta restoration is as close to playing the real beta builds as it gets. Based off of the E3 2001 build specifically, the release trailer for the game features game facts, special perks for her patrons, and well, being able to play the build. Portable Productions is still updating the build from time to time to fix things like bugs and whatever else is necessary to make the game as one-to-one -one as possible. There's also the premium deluxe version, which serves as a complete overhaul of the game, as well as adding a ton of new content like ghosts, features like the gramophone, and general quality of life additions. If you're interested in downloading any of the builds for yourself, the builds are readily available from Portable Productions Discord server. I'll leave a link in the description for anyone who's interested. Official Guidebook Like with basically all Mario games to come out, Luigi's Mansion has an official player's guide from Nintendo Power. It breaks down everything there is to know about the game and is very well made, and if you don't own a physical copy of this, I'll put a link to the Internet Archive ebook if anyone wants to scroll through the pages like I'm doing here. Readable Books Luigi's Mansion has five readable books that can be found on Neville's bookshelf, as well as two others written by EGAD. If you'd like, you can pause to read these short books individually, and the first five books are the Book of Pericles, Book of Riddles, Darkness is Their Cheese, Lydia's Child Care Diary, and Neville's Big Baby Care Diary. The other two books are EGAD's Guide to Ghosts and EGAD's Research Journal. Beta Rankings Pretty sure this is just referring to the unused rank emotes from earlier in the video. Beta Gallery Accessed by using Action Replay, it's possible to explore an early, unused version of the gallery. More on the gallery later. Luigi's Mansion 64 Luigi's Mansion 64 is a ROM hack for Mario 64 created by Mario Crash and Mimi in 2015. The ROM hack uses the same levels as the original game, albeit very different, and instead of Mario 64's 120 stars, this hack only has 111. The ROM got re-released with the vast improvements in 2022 by improving things like movement controls and implementing a level that originally wasn't able to be added, this time increasing the star counter to 118. I am definitely going to try this ROM hack out when I get the chance. Originally supported 3D. The GameCube console was originally going to be able to support the display of stereoscopic 3D, which is mainly used to create depth perception and is notably well known for its functionality on the 3DS. Well, according to Nintendo, Luigi's Mansion was originally going to have support for this 3D feature that the GameCube never ended up using. There are ways to play GameCube games using the cut feature, possible by using emulators that can give the perception of 3D with things like 3D glasses, but beyond that there's not really much else you can do. Teleporting Mirrors If you ever want to quickly get back to the foyer, find a mirror and take a picture of it with the Game Boy Horror to teleport. And it works! Mario 64 Sound Sample this unused audio snippet that could have been used for when Spooky Bit Luigi sounds like this. Ow, ow, oh, oh, nice doggy, nice doggy, oh, pet, pet. What's interesting about this is that the initial ow noises were reused for Super Mario 64 DS for when Luigi would take fire damage. S rank. I mentioned the rank A mansion earlier in the video but the S rank is a better and harder rank 
only being achievable in the 3DS remake of the game. It requires collecting 130 million G, with the rank S mansion being this as well as the painting. The Crows According to the iceberg, crows are a very overlooked part of the game. There's really not a lot of information about why that might be though, and I would say aside from the Golden Crows, which are a defeatable enemy in Dark Moon and Luigi's Mansion 3, I would say that maybe the crows represent something on a deeper level that I'm just failing to see. If anyone has a more definitive explanation for how the crows might represent more than just enemies and cutscene models, then I'd love to know what they mean, because I really can't figure it out. I'm guessing they have something to do with how crows often resemble death, and in this case, since there's two of them, maybe they resemble Mario and Luigi? That's my best guess here. Beta Mansion Concepts The original design for the mansion varied in small amounts from its conception up to its finished result. This version of the mansion from the Space World 2000 press disc differs just a tiny bit in comparison to the finished mansion. For example, the porch design is different, the windows are very basic, the roof is either unfinished or was planned to look like how it does here, and this version has another roof piece. This image of the mansion is another example of its initial simplicity, but other than those, and maybe the kiosk demo, the mansion honestly isn't too much different than what it ended up becoming. Amiibo support in Remake Yep, that's right. Luigi's Mansion on the 3DS has Amiibo support. It supports four existing ones, being Mario, Luigi, Toad, and Boo. Each one is a different outcome in the game when scanned, with Mario changing all of the poison mushrooms into super mushrooms to heal, Toad giving you the ability to heal yourself when you talk to him, Luigi gives you the chance to revive on death and a mission, as well as lighting up furniture that contains speedy spirits, and Boo reveals undefeated ghosts on the overworld map. And if you do end up dying with the extra life, it plays a special cutscene with the Polterpup dog before bringing you back into the game. Ghost Biographies The biography part of this entry is definitely talking about how some of the portrait characters have unexplored backstories. The most that's ever mentioned in the game for the characters are only individual details, like how Vincent Van Gogh failed to sell a single painting for 30 years, or how the glutton ate himself to death. There are fan extensions out there though, like this thread I found on DeviantArt by someone who unfortunately deactivated so I'm not sure who it was who made it. But posts like these make for an interesting idea of more of what the ghost backstories could have been. Boo looking at you. I touched on this earlier as well, but again, if you sit in the pause menu for just long enough, the boo will eventually look right at the player. 3DS box art. So this is what the box art looks like for the 3DS version of the game. But what about it? <laughs> I think I'm missing something here, like maybe there's something that's used in it that goes completely unused or something, because I'm looking here and I guess I haven't found it yet. If I'm being a massive idiot, and I probably am, then uh, let me know. <laughs> L. L is one of the most well-known removed enemies that there is. The model looks a lot like these things from LEGO Star Wars, and it's possible to load him into the game by using an action replay code. Having a total of six animations to go along with him, the way he would have damaged the player would have been by crossing their arms like this. L is thought to have risen from the ground like this, and it's well agreed on that L was definitely meant to have a texture and not just be white. Something else that I thought I'd mention is that L isn't the official name of the enemy, with the only reason people call it that being that the file for the enemy is L.SZP. Probably the coolest thing about the enemy though is its elemental abilities. L is able to make three different elements appear, being fire, water, and ice. Along with those, there's also three unused elemental core textures that can be found on the cutting room floor. Last thing about L that I'll bring up is that the enemy is also thought to maybe be an early version of Bogmire, but that's up for you to decide. Map Zero Map Zero is one of many unused maps, but this one is by far the most interesting one. You start out in the foyer as normal, but that's basically the only normal thing here. Okay, where do I start? There's fire just sitting there. King Boo is just chilling in the floor. 
He's also missing his crown. The shadow for Shivers the butler shows up unless you've killed him already. His candle is also in the floor. Luigi's arm, more specifically the one that grabs the Mario painting in the final cutscene of the game, is there too. Oh, and Mario's painting is just on the wall in the background too. And you can also climb the stairs, but there's nothing up there. Going to the next room by walking right through the floor takes you into a table room, which is honestly a room straight out of Gmod Prop Hunt. <laughs> the tables have no collision except for their legs in here. And in case you haven't noticed since it's invisible, there's also an invisible generator. According to the cutting room floor, there's also a spawn point for a golden mouse in the middle of the room, which is activated by fixing an activation event in the room that tries to turn on a different generator. Going in the left room takes you to a room that's straight up empty, but you will find the ghost of Mr. Rolinda dancing without their partner. The ghost is missing some functions, which makes it impossible to capture him, and if you already defeated him normally, then he's not going to show up here. If you also wanted to scan him, well, that crashes the game due to the game trying to call for an event that has it and its archive missing in the files. The ghost here is also not configured in the event info for Map Zero. Also, going in the room plays the Whirlinda's theme, and the only way to make it stop after that is by restarting the game entirely. And the last and final room on the right contains a copy of the foyer stairs as well as some ladders. That's it. Well, actually, there is one more thing. This King Boo. And fun fact, if you get close or even look at it, it crashes the game. Bowser is dead theory. To understand this theory, we first have to go back to Paper Mario 64. So after defeating Bowser in Paper Mario 64, it's said that he was brutally beaten and will most likely never return. Why is this important? Well, in Luigi's Mansion, there's a lot of things that hint towards the idea of Bowser actually being dead. The first thing comes from when you show the only friendly ghost in the game, fortune teller Madame Clairvoya, some of the Mario items you've found in the game, and each of the items reveals information about Mario, but the last item makes the ghost say this. I thought that Mario had soundly defeated Bowser. Has King Boo somehow revived Bowser? This could be horrible. Well, for you. That dialogue, combined with King Boo saying that he remembers how much trouble the brothers have caused him in the past, has made people speculate about if King Boo and Bowser have much deeper relations than we actually thought. This has also led people to believe that Bowser was actually revived by King Boo after his death in Paper Mario 64. That, combined with the fact that Bowser in the final fight is a fake one controlled by King Boo, would make the idea of Bowser being dead make a lot of sense actually. It's also believed that King Boo is actually Bowser's ghost, and if true, then coincidences like this one from Super Mario 64 where the Bowser laugh is a slowed down version of King Boo's laugh would make a lot more sense in hindsight. <laughs> 2021 new beta footage. One of the most well-known pieces of Space World 2000 footage for Luigi's Mansion was filmed by media executive Adam Dory. The original footage that was put on the internet in 2000 has had segments of it that were lost for various different reasons, and eventually people had asked Adam if he still had the original tapes in the vault, and he did. What you've been seeing on screen is a November 2021 re-upload of the footage using a modern encoder from the original DV tape. The three minute clip features things that I already mentioned, clips for The Legend of Zelda, as well as Miyamoto's controller demo for the GameCube. Luigi Matryoshka doll. Being an early model of the Luigi head that appears on the maps for the Game Boy Horror, it is almost exactly what the entry says it is. I should note that it's not confirmed that it's a Matryoshka doll, more that it just looks like one. Canonically Rank D. This one is kind of split into two arcs, but in the intro cutscene for Luigi's Mansion 2, the Rank D mansion from the original game is clearly visible, being the house Luigi lives in in the scene. But in Mario Kart Double Dash, the Rank A mansion is in the background of Luigi's circuit, so I guess there's two timelines here, one being the Rank D mansion timeline, and the other being the Rank A timeline. And what those may entail are completely up to you to decide. Rideable Poltergust it's possible to ride the Poltergust in the Bulosis battle, with the code being unused in the US version. Apparently this only works on PAL. Daisy Poster 
The game files contain an unused portion of Daisy on the left, which is a cropped version of Daisy's solo art for Mario Tennis on the N64. The best guess as for why it was in the files is that it might have been a test for the posters that get vacuumed off the walls. And uh, this is also what it looks like in the game, by the way. Choking Luigi There's an unused poison animation that consisted of Luigi choking and grabbing his throat. It's possible to restore its functionality by using these action replay codes for your respective region. Spinning Coin Being active in every room in the mansion, there exists a single coin that floats way out of bounds. I believe this was initially discovered by Inkstar on YouTube, and not only is the coin outright unreachable, but people also think that this coin in specific is most likely the one seen in the E3 2001 version's coin counter. This one coin also for some reason controls the behavior of all other coins in the game. Pop Happiness The font used in the game's logo is called Pop Happiness by Fontworks. There's a fan-made recreation of it called Delfino, which is actually the font that I used in the Mario Sunshine video and the one I'm using right now. So I guess if you're looking for a font that's very close to Pop Happiness, then I recommend using Delfino. I'll leave a link in the description for it. Beta Lab Music In beta versions of EGAT's Lab, a much different song plays than what ended up going here in the final version of the game. It's hard to hear it, but it's very clearly a different song. This is Luigi's first game, solely for his own, and he actually is the one that gets to save the day here. He uh, is he inherited this mansion, him and, him and Mario, and he comes to meet up with Mario at the mansion. This track has been recreated several times throughout the years, with the most accurate recreation being one made by Mr. Twirls in September of 2021. And it sounds like this. B Mario. The version of Luigi and Mario used in the game is a file called D Mario, but there's an older one with the name of this entry called B Mario. Mario in the B Mario model has straps for the poltergeist as well as having the same height as Luigi. The back straps could suggest that Mario at some point was planned to have used the poltergeist himself, but there's nothing definitive about that idea. C Parmesan. I'm not sure what makes this a beta entry, but I talked earlier about the game's books, with one of them being called Darkness is Their Cheese. Well, it turns out that the author of it is none other than C. Parmesan himself. Who is C. Parmesan? Now that is a really good question. E3 2001 GBH map. A file called guidemap.bin contains a version of the Game Boy Horror map from the E3 2001 demo. The models at least resemble the E3 demo mansion layout, and comparing it to the final version's layout, it's actually not terribly different from the final. Shiver died in a fire. It's pretty well known that Shivers the butler is afraid of fire, as evident by how the ghost will run away in fear by merely the sight of it. But due to this character's detail, many people have assumed that a fire is most likely what caused him to die. I believe it. Nintendo Power T-Shirt. Nintendo Power used to sometimes give subscribers free merchandise. For example, if you subscribe to Nintendo Power by using these pamphlets that came with the games, you had the option to choose a free piece of merchandise. In this one, you could choose between a t-shirt or a player's guide. And that white t-shirt right there is what it looks like, and I almost couldn't find any picture of this, so there you go. I was only able to find it from an eBay listing. Commercial. I'm guessing this aired upon the game's release, but this commercial is definitely an interesting one. I'll just let it play, and you'll see. You've got one night to save Mario from the supernatural. Luigi's Mansion. Only for Nintendo GameCube. Get out of here. Being shown in two different instances, if Luigi tries to vacuum certain pieces of cloth that can't be vacuumed up, then it will show this poster of Bulosis that says, Get out of here. 
The first one can be found in the projector room if Luigi tries to vacuum the projector screen. And the second one can be found in the second floor bathroom if you try to vacuum up the monster's poster. Shivers loves Melody. According to the lore of Shivers the butler, he is, quote, smitten with the beautiful Melody Pianissima, but it seems that she does not return his affections at all, likely due to their age differences. Poisoned Luigi. I'm pretty sure this is just a duplicate of the unused choking animation, but if it's not and you know what it actually is, let me know in the comments. First Person Mode The Game Boy Horror serves as a first person perspective as everyone knows, but it was apparently also going to feature a first person point of view for gameplay too. This was allegedly shown off at E3, but I have yet to find a video of it, and I looked through so much footage from the archives and I am just not sure where this video is. There is a working first person mod that gives us an idea of what it might have looked like which is on screen now, and this one specifically is made by SkyBluigi, and I'll put a link in the description if anyone wants to try it out. Hearts and Pillars The pillars on the roof in the 3DS version have a chance to drop hearts if they break. This also might happen in the GameCube version, but I've only ever seen them drop poison mushrooms. Mario got to the mansion first. It's a pretty good assumption that Mario was in the mansion before Luigi was, because, I mean, he got captured. But on the off chance that people somehow don't believe this, Egad says that he saw a guy with a red hat walk right into the mansion, not even stopping to talk to him, and then he never came back. Luigi's Shoelaces This is one of the silliest entries I've ever seen on an iceberg, but it's true. If you get into a situation where you can get a really good look at them, Luigi's model does in fact have shoelaces. Luigi.mdl Luigi.mdl is one of the earliest versions of Luigi's model. This model as well as B Mario has a lot of unused animations, and combined with B Mario's it totals to 29 different animations that have been playing on screen this whole time. Credit to the Happy Face King for making the video that showcases them all. How Mario was captured we all know that King Boo managed to capture Mario and put him in a painting, but how? The answer is open to a lot of interpretation, but judging by how Mario just enters the house with seemingly nothing on him, it's not inconceivable that the ghosts were most likely easily able to take him down. Also, why would Egad not even bother to stop Mario when he saw him going inside to tell him that it's a bad idea? That would have helped prevent everything, don't you think? To conclude this though, I think that Mario was very easily trapped by the ghosts and was either held against his own will, then trapped inside the painting, or they managed to make him go unconscious in order to put him in the painting, or both. Who knows. Paintings of portrait ghosts before death. All throughout the mansion are multiple different paintings of real people. This has led to some speculation about if any of those paintings are the portrait ghosts before they passed away. This theory I found on Reddit suggests that all the ghosts are related, with them all being responsible for creating this family tree you see now. Without going into this further, the most believable one on the graph is the first chain, at least in my opinion. But then there's parts that I really don't agree with. With parts like this, which is... What? <laughs> Other than that though, it's actually a really solid chart. Egad's Ladder Egad's laboratory has this ladder in the room to the left. Normally you aren't able to move in here, but by using an action replay code, you can move around and even climb the ladder. I unfortunately wasn't able to figure out what the exact code was, but you can do this. More on the ladder later. Speedy Spirits During the Blackout When the mansion's blackout happens after beating Bulossus, any speedy spirit ghost caught before the blackout will not show up on the map. All of the optional speedy spirits are in places like the rec room, dining room, and billiards room, and there's three of them that can only be caught during the blackout being the ones in the conservatory, hidden room, and the nursery. Transparent Furniture In the builds of the game from E3 2001, none of the furniture had any form of transparency. Tomato Model being mentioned in another entry earlier in the video, the tomato from that unused chef ghost has two unused models that look like this. The first one is the one shown earlier, 
And the second one is an animated one that I'm assuming would have been used for when it was thrown. <laughs> Egad's Morals. This fan theory, partly popularized by a video from Triple Wario, suggests that Egad is actually the one who resurrected King Boo, leading to the events of Luigi's Mansion. The speculation largely comes from the fact that Egad has given prior villains power, being in Super Mario Sunshine with the paintbrush, so who's to say he wouldn't do it a second time in another game? Well, if it is true that Egad intentionally gave Bowser Jr. the paintbrush in Super Mario Sunshine, it's most likely for A, experimental reasons, and B, to fuel some kind of power trip that Egad himself has. Think about it. Why would Egad give Bowser Jr. something that is so destructive in Mario Sunshine, while also giving Mario an invention that can stop it? And keep in mind, Egad did intentionally give the paintbrush to Bowser Jr. Just listen to what he says in this scene. Ooh. A strange old man in a white coat gave it to me. A strange old man in a white coat. So maybe the events of Luigi's Mansion are a direct result of Egad wanting to pull another experiment just for his own personal reasons. Egad does say that he's getting too old for ghost work, so maybe he saw Luigi as perfect bait to orchestrate his plan. It's also not far-fetched to say that Egad could have also been the one that sent the letter to Luigi about winning the mansion. Him not even bothering to stop Mario when he went in the mansion is another key detail to why this theory does kind of make sense to me. But if you think there might be any plot holes in this, don't hesitate to let me know in the comments. Beta Assets in WarioWare Following the release of WarioWare Get It Together in September 2021, people quickly realized that some of the assets in that game are directly recycled from the beta assets from Luigi's Mansion. This includes the furniture seen on screen now that was included in the game and upscaled to be a higher resolution. This screenshot from Portable Production shows what the assets look like in-game. More portrait ghosts planned. The beta version of the gallery is much larger than the finished version, which directly implies that there were most likely going to be way more ghosts than what ended up being implemented. Monster Poster The Monsters poster is a poster that can be found in the second floor bathroom, the twins room, and in the 3DS version, only the twins room. The poster has three of the most well-known Universal Classic monsters on it, being Frankenstein, Dracula, and the Wolfman. Might I also add that the poster floats in the second floor bathroom. Area 4 Darkness After unlocking the door on the balcony in Area 4, it plays a cutscene of lightning striking the house, causing a blackout. This event is significant because it obviously cuts all electricity from the mansion, but it also brings back a lot of ghosts, even if they were previously defeated before it. You also can't save the game at all during it, and the blackout can be reversed by defeating Uncle Grimly and then resetting the circuit breaker in the breaker room found in the basement. The Portrait Ghost Family Tree Being a continuation of the relations theory I talked about, this reddit post specifically, also made by the same guy, proposes this as a portrait ghost family tree. And as for these placements on the tree, I'm going to briefly explain what is already stated in the reddit post. So let's start with Vincent Van Gogh and Nana. Vincent's siblings are the clockwork ghosts as well as Sir Weston, and Nana's brother is Uncle Grimly. So with that information, why are their descendants everything below? Well, the person on Reddit says that they made them marry due to their portraits in the parlor. This is assuming that Neville and Lydia were the most recent people who owned the mansion since their portraits were in the parlor, but the post points out that Vince's portrait not only shows up there, but is in the center of the room with candles around it. This is an indicator that Vincent was important to the family, being important to the previous owners which were assumed to be Vincent and Nana. It's also assumed that Vincent may have died 20 or so years before Nana did, which would explain the age difference between the two. For the Clockwork Soldiers, the theory here is that they are a split soul between the toy collector who owned them, whoever that might be, and the reasoning for them being brothers with Vincent and Sir Weston are because of how they're all found in the attic and the basement, as opposed to the quote, living spaces of floors 1 and 2. It's also assumed that Sir Weston owns the armor, or even the armory itself, given that he is a Sir. 
There's only so far this can be taken in my opinion, but with the reasonings presented in the Reddit explanation, this one is a pretty well thought out theory that I recommend reading on Reddit if you're interested in the rest. Just to conclude though, not counting siblings here, Generation 1 starts with Vincent and Nana, and for Generation 2, Neville and Lydia, and Generation 3's beginnings start with Chauncey, the twins, and Supi. Other things on the graph include unintentional creations, Jarvis and Bogmire, and the only one that's left out in the corner is Madame Clairvoya. This Reddit post is split into many parts, so if you're interested in reading on, then I'll leave a link for the Reddit post in the description. Mario bringing spare clothes. Given that Luigi finds one of Mario's shoes and his hat, this has led some people to believe that after seeing him not missing his hat in the painting, that maybe there's a chance that Mario packed an extra pair of clothes. I am in the belief that it was planted by either Egad or King Boo, because when does Mario ever bring a second hat? Beta Mansion Title Screen If we are to believe the entry, the final title screen in the game uses the Beta Mansion's model in the background. Now that I'm getting a second look at it, it actually does look like it's the beta one, wow. Lightning more when idle. I honestly have insane doubts of this actually being true. This comparison on screen, along with the lack of proof about this online, leads me to believe that this is purely a placebo more than anything else. Maybe there's something in the code that controls more lightning when it doesn't detect that any buttons are moving, but I don't know, I just don't think it's true. Okay, adding on to this entry after the fact, um, it happens a lot in cleared rooms when you're just sitting there doing nothing, so actually, I kind of believe this. Boo Woods. There's a real name that was given to the woods that surround the mansion, being called the Boo Woods. Ghost Chest. Going into this one, I initially thought that it might have been something in the literal sense, like a ghost chest. But no, it's actually just about how the chest and the beta were transparent for some reason. Scrapped 2 player mode. Using an action replay code to restore the unused game code, it's possible to restore the functionality of an unused multiplayer mode. Restoring it makes a second Luigi spawn in game, and aside from what was finished being programmed here like the camera sometimes going into split screen like it should, other things though, like the second Luigi's functionality, is kind of broken since it can't do things nearly as well as player one. Spinning coin. I already talked about this earlier in the video. This is a duplicate entry. Babyroom.bms. There's an unused song that was going to play when Luigi talks to Chauncey for the first time in the nursery. Not sure why Nintendo felt the need to remove it, but this is what the song sounds like. GameCube Controller Demo During its introduction in Space World 2000, alongside showcasing the GameCube, Shigeru Miyamoto showed off this demo for the controller that featured ghosts from Luigi's Mansion. The full version of this is nearly 7 minutes long, so I'll leave a link to the whole thing down below. Bogmire's Origins According to Bogmire's wiki trivia, Bogmire was created by King Boo in order to protect the mansion, and that he was never once alive. He's also the only portrait ghost in the game with no dialogue at all. This makes his origin pretty much a complete mystery. Prototype GameCube image. There's not just one prototype GameCube, as there are many different ones, like this one on screen with LED lighting as well as a handle, so honestly I don't know which one specifically that this entry is trying to get at, but I'm going to guess and say that it has something to do with the one that had the 3D LCD screen as it's already been talked about. Luigi's Mansion was not planned for the Nintendo 64. I've read online in the past that Luigi's Mansion was originally planned for the Nintendo 64 that was then given a graphics upgrade and ported to the GameCube, but the problem I have with this entry is that I literally don't know what I'm supposed to believe. The idea of an original Nintendo 64 version is believable to a limit, but I have literally never ever seen solid proof of the game actually being originally planned for the N64. I have a feeling that people may have confused this with the scrapped 3D feature that the GameCube is going to have, or I'm just severely misinformed about this and it's on the internet somewhere but I can't find it. Either way, 
I'm leaning towards the notion that this entry is correct in saying that it was never planned for the Nintendo 64. Invisible Furniture Invisible furniture can be found in both the twins room as well as on the roof. These pictures from the cutting room floor use hitboxes to show it, with the one in the twins room being found on the fourth wall, and with the one on the roof being inside the ground. Beta Room Clear Music The beta version of the game had a very interesting song that played whenever Luigi would clear a room. Have a listen for yourself. Infinite dust. It might just be me in this iceberg, but there is a lot of dust in the mansion. I mean, it makes sense though, right? I mean, the furniture probably hasn't been touched for years at a time. And I know this entry's partially a joke, but it's still food for thought, you know? It is really dusty. Toads missing. During the blackout, all of the toads leave the mansion. Where do they go? Do they get scared and go to Egad's lab? That would make the most sense, at least to me. Egad's lab seems like the only place in the game where nothing is really haunted, so... Then again, there's the part where Toad calls from the lab, which kind of answers the question I had. Weird unused tracks and sound effects. From the large amount of tracks and sound effects listed on the cutting room floor, Luigi's Mansion has around 52 unused sounds that didn't make it into the finished game. The entry implies that some of these are weird, and that is definitely not wrong, as you'll see. What better way to show them than just by showing you a couple of them? So, here you go. How the booze were trapped. We obviously all know about how the mansion is riddled with booze, but how did they even get there? Well, considering that King Boo is there, I'm gonna take a wild guess and say that maybe King Boo just wanted some of his henchmen to help him with trapping Luigi after doing the same thing to Mario. Full Space World FMW. I'm pretty sure this is meant to say FMV, meaning full movie, which in the context of Luigi's Mansion would be all of the cutscenes put together. With the most recent versions of this being as recent as November 2021, the current longest version is only 45 seconds, and obviously features all the cutscenes from Space World. Most video game full movies form a complete story, but I have a feeling that this is not the case with Space World 2000's demo of Luigi's Mansion. And as far as the entry is concerned, the 45 second long movie might be the most complete version there is. Soupy died in her sleep. The Game Boy Horror entry for Soupy says that what was meant to be a short nap seems to have turned into eternal rest for sweet Soupy. Yeah, it's honestly pretty sad. Luigi's Mansion Vinyl As far as I'm aware, there are no official Nintendo vinyl collections for any of their soundtracks from any of their games. There do exist vinyls for Luigi's Mansion that are made by third parties like Select Start Records. Unfortunately for me, I wasn't able to get my hands on one of these, but luckily, there's a full YouTube video that plays through the entire soundtrack. I've also seen the same soundtrack made by other third parties, but as far as I can tell, the most well-known version of it is the one made by Select Start. If there's anyone out there who actually has one of these, uh, let me know if it's nice. Z Crouch Button In the finished game, pressing the Z button will open up the Game Boy Horror. These controls weren't always like this though, as in the beta version, it was apparently the crouch button instead. And while I'm talking about old controls, the only other change in the beta version was that the C-Stick and Analog Stick controls were swapped. Ghost Portraits in Beta Parlor Some of the paintings in the parlor used to have different portraits than in the final. Examples of this are one of the paintings on the left of the room, and also one on the right. Real Money it's said that the mansion is an illusion, which is fine, but how come there's real money in it? I'm not sure who initially started this theory, but this is one of the theories that I think is kind of weightless, but at the same time there are gold bars and cash and gemstones and diamonds. So yeah, you know what? This is weird. Why is there just money laying around? 
Maybe King Boo put it there or something. Maybe Egad uses the money from the mansion to keep his lab afloat. I don't know. I'm going to consider this money being real in the story since the money Luigi found was used to make his new mansion after you beat the game. But do you think this very common game trope is being way too looked into? Boo and King Boo secret cutscene. Every Boo cutscene has a different variant depending on how many Boos that you've caught in Area 4. Two cutscenes per Boo to be exact. The Boos also have four different lines of dialogue that depend on how much time and effort it takes Luigi to catch them. In order to get through all of them, you have to lose track of the Boo four times to get all four. The video that's been playing is a showcase of all of the cutscenes, and it totals to eight minutes of unique cutscenes that lots of players most likely never organically find. Something else I found while researching this entry is this reference to Star Wars in the dialogue from Super Mario Bros. Twitter, so there's that too, which is pretty cool. Egad's True Intentions I think this entry ties into the Egad Morals theory in that his true intentions could very well be for his own personal gain, rather than a genuine attempt to help Mario and Luigi. Due to the ambiguous parts of the story that have led to theories like this, it's honestly not far-fetched. According to him, the mansion randomly showed up one day, and he says he's been living in this lab since his 20s, but do you really believe that? Not answering the phone during the blackout. What happens if you don't answer Egad's telephone call during the blackout? Well, let's find out. <laughs> nothing, nothing happens. King Boo sent the letter. Now this is a theory that actually makes a lot of sense. We've already talked about how King Boo could very well be Bowser in a soul form, and since King Boo is the main antagonist of the game, it makes a whole lot of sense that he would be the one to send Luigi that letter. Honestly though, if we're really thinking about it, if I was Luigi and I got a letter in the mail saying I want a mansion, I probably wouldn't go visit it. That just sounds like a terrible idea. Maybe this is me being biased since Luigi is a perfect example of why it's a bad idea, but I digress. Weird background noises and gallery music. I'm going to play the gallery music for around 20 seconds, and I want you to be the judge of if you can hear anything abnormal in the song. Fire Tornadoes The newer Luigi's Mansion games feature a literal tornado of vacuum power, but a fire tornado? I think I'm missing something. Maybe it's just the term people gave to when Luigi holds down the fire element vacuum, but this entry states this as an in-game slash fact, so I don't know what to believe and it was hard to find any information online about a fire tornado. The word tornado is also not mentioned in any of the game's dialogue, so I'm lost. Obviously, the poltergeist in the game creates a mini tornado, so maybe it could be just a reference to that with the fire element, but I'm not sure. Secret Cave Room There's a secret cave room that still has camera data remaining in the game files. If it was fully put in, it would have been beside this spot in the graveyard. In this footage from Swanky Box, going this way led you to a tunnel-like path, then when you got far enough, it would just stop. This area also acts like it's not been cleared, even if you clear the entire rest of the mansion. It's not sure if it would have been an above ground area or not, as the Boo Woods was built right on top of it, but it's thought to have been a cave that connected to the climbable ladder from Egad's lab. Whatever the case though, unless Nintendo confirms anything, we have no idea what it was actually going to be. Poltergust in the Thousand Year Door On April 15th, 2021, Someone on Reddit named NaturalNova2007 made a post about how they found an image of Luigi with the poltergeist in the game files for Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. Turns out though that it's not an unused texture and that instead, sometimes Luigi has a chance to have the poltergeist on when he's in the audience. 
harder to get F rank than A rank. There's a common belief that it's straight up harder to get an F rank than it is to get the best rank in the game. And since it honestly is pretty difficult to get the lowest rank due to how much you have to get absolutely destroyed by the ghosts, it's definitely easier to get the higher ranks than it is to get the lowest possible one. I wouldn't say it's easier to get rank A than F, but rather that it's easier to get rank B than F. At least that one's more common. Luigi looks at the ceiling. Whenever you go idle in the game, Luigi will start to look at the ceiling. I don't know if he looks all the way at the ceiling, but he definitely does look around. Lightning in every room. If you don't count the basement, every room in the mansion will have lightning being struck on the wall, even happening in rooms where there's no windows. Weird, right? Screenshot from Japanese version. The English version of the manual accidentally has a Japanese screenshot in it. Pretty funny mistake, Nintendo. Unused fear states. Along with other unused states like the poisoned one from earlier, Luigi also has three more unused states of fear. The first one is this one, which cuts Luigi's full health in half to 50, making him unpredictably crawl around in the room like this. The second one caps the health to 70, this time lowering his speed a little and making Luigi look down slightly. This one is actually broken due to the game trying to make him do an animation that isn't properly coded in. The third and last one will only happen in rooms that are lit, and it makes him tiptoe around while one of his voice clips plays in a loop. Item Pickup Call Glitch If you manage to get into a situation where you can pick up an item as EGAD calls you, you'll pick the item up while the animation itself still plays for the call. It also does this. God, that is terrifying. <laughs> EGAD being cold. For some unexplainable reason, the top of EGAD's head is defined in the game as being an icy surface, and by using cheats to force Luigi to be on top of him, he literally shivers from how cold he is. This is so hilarious to me. N64 Mario Painting This painting of Mario uses one of his models that can be found in Mario Golf for the Nintendo 64. Was he a dream too? When Egad is talking about how he saw a similar looking person with a red hat go up to the mansion without even stopping to talk to him, he then says, Was he a dream too? Referring to earlier when he said, I don't know if it's a dream, an illusion, or what, but I surely wouldn't be too happy winning a haunted house. That question is kind of weird, but I think maybe Egad thinks that it's a coincidence that someone that looks similar to Luigi showed up to the house. That question is really weird, though. Vincent Van Gogh created the rats and bats. A lot of Vincent Van Gogh's artwork in the game are a lot of the enemies you see in the game, so the idea of him being responsible for the creation of the rats and the bats would make a lot of sense. There's not really anything deeper to this theory other than its possibility, so if you want to believe that Vincent Van Gogh did this or not is up to you, but let's move on. The Mansion's family died in a fire. We know it's likely that Shivers the butler died in a fire due to his intense fear of it, but the whole rest of the family? I think not. It's unclear where this theory originated from, but I'm guessing it has to do with the idea that the mansion itself is an illusion, so maybe if the family died in a fire, that would explain why there's no real mansion, and instead it burned down along with the family? I don't know. I think there's key aspects that I might be forgetting to include. Living Spooky So this entry's description says that Spooky for some reason looks quite alive in this photo, and the link attached to view it is this. So I don't know what picture in specific it is, but I'm willing to bet that it's one of these framed pictures. Minus the tail from being a ghost, he does actually look very alive. Luigi supports animal rights. If you go into the safari room and scan the animal rug, Luigi has this to say about the rug. There's only one toad. I think this theory is pretty dumb, but the idea is somewhat interesting. Otherwise, not really. I do like the idea though of Toad running all the way to the balcony, and then running all the way back to the foyer, then all the way to the courtyard, then all the way to the washroom, then all the way to the foyer again, then all the way to the balcony, and so on. Portraits depicting ghosts when they were alive. 
This entry reflects on the idea that the portraits of the ghost after they're caught do a really good job at depicting a portrait of a real living person. Obviously the ghosts are posted up for purposes like the gallery, but it is an interesting thing to think about. That or this is just talking about how the human portraits are found all throughout the mansion. It's probably that. The dust took three months to program. According to the time it took between game files when coming up with the engine, it took the programmers around three months just to get the dust how they wanted. The dust is probably one of the most overlooked mechanics in the game, having a very complex system that accompanies how it works. By using the game's debug mode, we can see just exactly how the dust works. Every time you suck up dust with the poltergust, the game keeps track of exactly how many milligrams of dust get collected by it. The only time the counter ever resets is when you load a save file. And if you played for a while and then started to blow the dust out, it could take several minutes of sitting there and waiting until all of the dust actually makes it out of the machine. The fact that this was even kept track of has made people think that it might have had a purpose at some point, but was later removed, but something I do know is that it's a very interesting mechanic. And Frighten. The attack that the Basher Ghost does in the E3 2001 build is referred to in the game files as the In Frighten attack type. It goes completely unused in the finished game, and is possible to restore by changing appearance values, as well as using action replay codes to fix the game from crashing since it tries to call for a pointer in the code that goes invalid. Room 01A Room 01A is either an early version of the secret room, or is just an individual testing area. There's a rug on the floor, which is most likely where the door is meant to be, and the room also uses textures from the foyer. I guess you just can't plan for this sort of thing. If you scan this gravestone in the graveyard, Luigi says this, which is... odd. I guess Luigi's not exactly wrong, but very odd. From the beginning. In E3 2001 builds, the title screen gave you the option to either skip the intro or press from the beginning. Selecting this option will start the game from the opening cutscene. 24 hour time limit. Ever since the game first came out back in 2001, there's always been a common misconception about the game having a hidden 24 hour timer that starts ticking once you start playing the game. There's also another misconception that this timer was going to be used for a 24 hour mode, but neither of these things appear to be true. The only timer that was ever used was for the game demos, but who knows? Maybe there was going to be a timer that correlated to your mansion rank or something? It's hard to say. Skull on Mansion's Front Door Being visible in the opening cutscene, this does appear to be true. Kind of a red flag if you ask me. Inaccessible Ghosts There's a very small amount of ghosts that are impossible to defeat. They're found in the sitting room and the guest rooms during the blackout, and since you can't visit either of these rooms during the blackout, why do they even spawn there? <laughs> Maybe Nintendo had different plans but changed their mind mid-development. Bouncy Ball Ghost Used in Moon Game The Bouncy Ball Ghost is an unused enemy that is similar in appearance to the Meteor Ghost, but it turns out that these are actually the same. The difference between them though is that the one that you shoot at the moon is called Star.MDL, and are always yellow. The ball enemy though, if implemented, would have been one of four different colors. Ghost Poster in Darkness If you use cheats to move the camera outside of the map to the left of the storage room, you might notice something to the left on screen now. Well, if we increase the brightness on that, it's actually a poster of a ghost holding a trumpet. And I have no idea why it's there. Jarvis Jarvis is a small ghost who loves collecting jars that can be found in the ceramic studio in the mansion, but is he actually a ghost? There's a surprising amount of people out there who don't think that Jarvis is a ghost, but how would he not be? What reason would people possibly have to suspect that this ghost wasn't created by, let's say, Vincent Van Gogh? The wiki's trivia says things like how Jarvis appears to be Scottish based on the way he talks in the dialogue, how he's the only non-boss portrait in the game who doesn't have a scannable heart, and my favorite one, Jarvis is most likely an octopus due to its correlation with how Japanese media sometimes shows octopi inside of jars. I don't personally believe that Jarvis isn't a ghost, 
But do you have a compelling theory? Let me know in the comments. Promo flashlight. If you were invited to E3 of 2001, there's a chance that you were given this incredibly rare Luigi's Mansion promotional flashlight. Shining it casts the GameCube logo, and something that's really cool about it is that pressing that red button and holding it down will keep the flashlight off, which is a direct nod to holding down the B button to keep the flashlight off in the game. I also found a video of someone reviewing the flashlight, so shout out to Nightram56 for showing it off. EGAD sent the letter. If we are to believe that EGAD is the one responsible for the mansion as well as the game's events, him being the one to send Luigi the letter would make a lot of sense and would fit right into the theory. Honestly, the more I think about EGAD being dark and twisted, the more and more believable I think it is. There's just something about him, but I don't know exactly what. He says the mansion just appeared one day, but I don't know how much I really believe that. Prototype sold on eBay. On December 24th, 2019, a GameCube NR disc that actually had a late prototype build was sold on eBay by a user named ProtonX2 for 350 US dollars. This incredibly rare build of the game has not been dumped anywhere on the internet at the time of me making this video, and it's also not currently known as to who owns the copy. The eBay listing has since disappeared from eBay, so unless the person who owns it comes out about it publicly, which he might have somewhere on the internet, this is as far as it goes. The fact that this even happened at all is insane, though. <laughs> Placement on the Mario timeline. Given the vast amount of theories that people have for Luigi's Mansion, where does this game fit into the timeline for the Mario franchise? Well, I believe that it takes place at the very end of the timeline, and I'll tell you why. The first piece of evidence comes from when Madame Clairvoya says she thought that Mario had soundly defeated Bowser. Bowser is alive in a living form in pretty much every other Mario game, so this dialogue would back this up. The other massive piece of evidence is that Bowser is not mentioned a single time in Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon or Luigi's Mansion 3. Think about how weird that is. Can you even think of a Mario game that doesn't have Bowser in it? What about one that doesn't even reference him at all? That's pretty telling. So if we were to line up every single Mario game in existence in a timeline order, Luigi's Mansion would without a doubt go at the very end. This theory, as well as my reasonings for it, stem from this Reddit post from August of 2022 by someone named Money Whisperer. Sitting Room Unsettling Aura some people think that the sitting room in Area 4 has a really unsettling feel to it. Reasons for this aren't exactly straightforward, but I'm assuming it has something to do with the liminality that gets created in this entire game, really. It's not something that can be easily explained, and if you are able to understand the unsettling aura of rooms like this, then you know what I'm talking about. Liminal and Nostalgic Aura Luigi's Mansion's eerie environment combined with its lower poly graphics is a perfect mixture for liminality and nostalgia. Nostalgia for the same reason liminal spaces give you that weird feeling of familiarity, and liminal for the aesthetics and architecture present throughout the mansion. 3DS Commercial Beta Voice Lines Nintendo's commercial for the 3DS version of the game, as well as the launch trailer, contains the sound that plays when Luigi gets burned in Super Mario 64 DS. Everything is standing in his way. Invite him. Normal ghosts are imps. An imp is a small creature that is usually mischievous in their nature, most commonly having the appearance of a devil. While the ghost in Luigi's Mansion may not have the common resemblance, but they do arguably show off behavior not too different from imps in European mythology. To be mischievous is to be fond of causing trouble in a playful way, and that's not unlike the ghost, don't you think? Well, there is the part where they try to physically attack you, which kind of invalidates everything I just said, but it's still a topic to be debated about. Astral Hall is a cult summoner. The Astral Hall and its circular plate in the middle leaves a lot of unanswered questions. The candles surrounding it, as well as the writing on it, seem not too unlike something used in cultist rituals. You have to light the candles to start a whole event here, 
But let's think about why this room is in the mansion. There's a lot of purpose-built rooms in the mansion, so assuming the mansion is real, why would it have an astral hall? Well, I think that since there's an observatory right beside it, it might have something to do with astrology more than it does with anything cultist or ritualistic. I could very well be wrong though, but for what other reason would it be in that spot in the house? Japanese version development ending. According to this iceberg, the development for the Japanese version of Luigi's Mansion officially ended at 3 o'clock in the morning in 2001. This information is so unheard of that I'm not even sure if it's true. The fact isn't mentioned anywhere else on the internet, and trust me, I tried to find it, but failed to get real proof of this. If this isn't made up, then that's probably not that uncommon, especially for game developers, but if it was mentioned somewhere, the source is so buried on the internet that I wouldn't have a clue as to where to find it. EGAD repeating lines. Not sure why this one is so low on the list, but whenever you catch a boo, EGAD's response he gives on the phone will be the exact same until you save the game. If you choose to continue instead, the next boo that you catch will repeat the same dialogue. I honestly don't even know why this one's on the iceberg, especially this low. It makes no sense. Bouncing Poltergust Straps In an unused cutscene that consists of EGAD waving, moving the camera using cheats shows a Luigi who is present but out of the camera's view. In that same cutscene, though, it shows a warped, broken Poltergust Strap that bounces up and down out of view. Beta Game Over referenced in Smash in August of 2018, Nintendo announced a Direct that Simon Belmont from Castlevania would become a playable character in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. In the trailer, it shows him killing Luigi, who for a brief moment becomes wide-eyed, in a reference that's honestly debatable if it's even a reference to that game over screen at all. Seems more like people just made a mental link over it due to the very slight similarity. Welcome to Acid Theater. Remember that weird unused sound file from earlier? Welcome, welcome to well, it turns out that the full version of that soundbite comes from a sample pack from Spectrosonic's Distorted Reality Volume 1, with the sample itself being called Bad Acid. My best guess is that it was maybe going to be used for a ghost or some other ambient purpose, but take a listen for yourself. Welcome to Welcome to Acid Theater. Unicorn statue from Ocarina of Time. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time once had a fountain containing three unicorns. When fans got word of these screenshots, people searched far and wide when the game came out for this room, believing that it may have the Triforce in it. I guess someone at Nintendo may have not wanted the models to go to waste, as it was promptly recycled into Luigi's Mansion on the balcony. Except it wasn't, because just look at it. It's completely different. This is easily the dumbest theory on the iceberg. Maybe the entry is trying to say that the idea got reused, or it's just a joke, which in that case it very well could have been reused. But the model? No way. Polter Q. Polter Q was a minigame that was part of a Flash game called The Lab on Nintendo's website. It came out in 2002, and the game involves hitting a billiard ball into any of the holes by using the Poltergust 1000 with the mouse. It's a very simple game, only lasting three rounds, with each round requiring one more bank shot than the last, and if you for some reason want to play this game for yourself, I'll leave a link in the description for the copy of it on the Internet Archive. Mario Wanted the Mansion Mario arriving at the mansion before Luigi has opened the door to the possibility of Mario wanting the mansion for himself. The issue with this though is that Peach has a massive castle that he's definitely welcome to at any time, so why would he even want it? Let's humor this idea though and assume that the timeline theory is correct, so maybe the Mushroom Kingdom doesn't exist anymore by this point, and Mario is off to wander around on his own. But even then, if he stumbled upon the most haunted looking mansion ever, why would he go inside and ignore Egad, the only other person there? It makes no sense. This theory is not one that I believe in. Weird Noises and Toad Theme 
So apparently the song that plays when you find a toad has something weird hidden inside of the song. I listened to the whole thing and let me tell you, I don't know what the hell they're talking about. Someone must have had a hypnotizing experience with the song and started hearing the melody in their head or something because I just do not hear a damn thing. Basher's ghost name is not Basher. The Basher ghost from the beta was never officially called the Basher. The origin of the name is a mystery, and one day people just started calling it Basher, and it stuck. Egad is watching. Egad calls you quite a lot during the game, but how does he always know where you are in the mansion? Isn't it weird that he just knows whenever you catch a boo or beat a boss? Aside from the phone signal somehow working in the area where the mansion is, the absolute weirdest case of this is when the blackout happens. Weirder is that he says he thought he'd try the phone since you are in the telephone room. But how does he even know that? Also, how is the phone even working? I'm guessing the phone is an older one with a backup battery, but that still doesn't explain how EGAD is somehow aware of where Luigi is, and I think this is ultimate proof that EGAD is always watching. Nintendo Power Luigi figure. If you were a kid in the middle of 2002, then there's a slim chance that you might remember seeing these figures in the store. Released in November 2002 by Joyride Studios, the Luigi's Mansion one is now considered to be a limited edition collector's item. It came with Luigi, the Poltergust, and a ghost, and if you have $750 to spare, then you can pick one of these up for yourself on eBay. Beta Concepts Reused the gimmicks of the scrapped chef ghost, as well as the sewer ones, were eventually reused and turned into the bowling ghosts and the sparks. Beta Flower Pot and Smash In the Luigi's Mansion stage in Super Smash Bros. Brawl, there's a blue pot on a table that is from the beta version of the game. Why Nintendo put it there, who knows. Van Gore's paintbrush is Bowser Jr.'s. In the events of Super Mario Sunshine, Bowser Jr. used EGAD's paintbrush to create graffiti that was able to create all sorts of different things in the events of the game. But what about Van Gore's paintbrush? The difference between Vincent and Bowser Jr. though is not only the intense time difference on the timeline, but also the fact that Vincent actually painted on a canvas with his brush. If we assume that EGAD is the one behind Luigi's Mansion's events, I still don't think it's the same brush. I mean, yes, the time difference could very well have changed parts of the brush, but just look at them. The only similarities are that they're both brushes. Something to consider about this theory, though, is that EGAD is, after all, an inventor. If EGAD really is the one that created both brushes, then there's probably a hundred more prototypes of both of the brushes put together. To conclude this entry, though, I don't think Van Gore's paintbrush is the same one from Sunshine. The beta will be dumped. Ever since the first major Nintendo Giga Leak a couple years back, it seems that no game is safe from the inevitability of being leaked onto the internet. Seeing just how much material that's been leaked since 2020 really makes it seem like it's only a matter of time before people will finally be able to play the beta. But until that happens, we'll have to stick with the final product as well as the amazing beta restoration. Well, we've reached the very bottom. That was a very long explanation. Maybe a little too long, but I think I did pretty good. There weren't a whole lot of things that I couldn't figure out with this one, but if you think I got something wrong or I misinterpreted something, then feel free to let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, then I bet you'll enjoy my other iceberg explanations too. If I were you, I'd totally check them out. If you enjoyed this video, then you should totally consider subscribing to the channel, as it really helps me out. I'm also about to hit 50,000 subscribers, so that's pretty cool. Alright, well I've been talking for a while now, and I need to relax, so I think I'm gonna go to sleep. Goodbye.